Hi everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. How are we all doing? Uh, just wanted to do some follow-up testing on the uh, humidity, uh, the effects of humidity on powder videos that I uh, submitted and published on my YouTube page not too long ago. Um, in, in, invariably, every time I publish a, a video on a topic, I'll get some correspondence from uh, other shooters uh, about the topic, um, various assertions, various additional information, things like that, all very helpful and, and welcomed. Um, one thing that I did get from uh, one shooter was that, uh, well, the, the powder keg itself, the, the plastic container that the uh, powder is stored in could absorb humidity and cause humidity changes to the powder inside. Uh, so I thought that that was an interesting assertion. I, I certainly am aware of the wealth of information out there about this particular type of plastic, uh, HDPE, which you can see from the bottom of the jug, there's a little triangle down there and oftentimes uh, it'll just say on it HDPE on the bottom there to let you know what type of plastic container it is. Uh, well, HDPE is actually used uh, quite often, if not almost exclusively in the United States, um, to store um, like pill medications. Uh, the reason why they do that is because HDPE is uh, so impervious to humidity entering into the container. So um, it is supposed to be uh, basically impervious to uh, getting anything inside the container wet or humid. Um, for example, the medication, if pills get wet, they, this, the substance become, could become inert, could become compromised in some way. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why uh, pharmaceutical companies uh, put their pills in HDPE uh, containers. So anyway, I thought, okay, I'm not sure that, you know, that that assertion is going to show anything, but I decided to go ahead and test it. So <laughs> I went ahead and uh, grabbed a, a jug of uh, N133 um, and I got myself what's called a Kestrel Drop. Kestrel Drop is a thing that you can put anywhere and it gives you uh, readings of all kinds of different things depending on the kind of drop you get. Uh, this one is the D3 which gives me like temperature, humidity, dew point, and a few other uh, variables but it definitely measures humidity. So um, so for this test I thought okay you know I'll go ahead and drop the drop in the powder keg and do some uh, baseline testing of humidity. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, the drop is a bit larger than the opening of the container. So I actually had to kind of cut a little groove into the container here and, and drop it in that way and then throw some duct tape over it to, uh, to, cut, to seal it back up. Um, you might think, well, the duct tape is going to absorb some humidity, uh, and that's certainly possible. But I thought to myself, okay, well, let, let's go ahead and test it out and see. Maybe duct tape itself is uh, impervious to humidity too. Um, certainly if humidity does get in there while it's sealed with duct tape, I would then find a jug just like this, the same kind of plastic, same kind of plastic thickness, uh, and then drop the, the drop into that container. Um, but let's go over what I found in this test. All right, what I found was I did actually what's called an ABAB design where I tested um, whether there was going to be any humidity that penetrated the keg uh, twice. Um, in, su in successive sessions. So I started with uh, placing the keg with the Kestrel drop inside of it and a Kestrel drop outside of the keg so I can measure the outside temperature and humidity and then the inside temperature of humidity inside the keg. Um, and that was my first baseline test. I ran that for 17 hours and 30 minutes to give it adequate time to uh, uh, basically a lot of time to see if the humidity does get in there. So inside, indoor house, um, outside of the keg, it was 72.2 degrees on average. Um, what ended up happening was the inside of the keg, the temperature kind of mirrored closely at 71.72 degrees. Okay, and then the indoor um, humidity outside of the keg was 49.7 um, 
and inside the keg 59.4 so interestingly the average humidity indoor over that 17 hour and 30 minute period uh, was lower than the humidity in the case in the keg excuse me okay so then what I did is I took it inside the garage ran the same test put a drop inside the container kept a drop outside the container um, uh, just to note my garage is not temperature controlled it's generally pretty humid in there I live in the Pacific Northwest United States where it's humid and rains a lot so um, the garage uh, temperature on average um, outside of the keg was 64.4 degrees inside the keg was 63.8 so again the keg the temperature inside the keg tends to change and that's all consistent with uh, with uh, basically plastics they know that temperature can change outside of the jug and then it, it affects inside it's like your milk for example is in an HDPE container and when you put it in your refrigerator it goes down to the temperature of the refrigerator okay um, the garage humidity on average during that 17 and a half hour uh, period was 70.4 inside of the keg uh, was 55.5 for humidity so as you can see there the garage humidity was uh, definitely a lot higher um, than inside the house um, but the humidity inside the keg didn't really change much from the indoor uh, humid indoor inside the keg humidity they were both around 55 uh, which is about the average humidity for uh, powder when they ship it to you it's usually anywhere in between uh, 40 to, to 55 percent humidity okay then I ran the test again I, I pulled it out of the garage put the keg inside the house and once again inside the house it was average 70 degrees inside the keg was about 69.4 so again the the temperature the keg definitely changes by the temperature um, indoor humidity was about 50.2 uh, percent hum relative humidity inside the keg it again remained at around 55 uh, percent 55.8 okay so after 17 and a half hours of that placed it back in the garage again um, again the garage temperature was 65.1 outside of the keg inside the keg 64.4 again temperature gets in there and it, it, it cools the inside um, of the keg humidity in the garage at that time was 70.8 percent relative humidity inside the keg 56.4 so once again all very consistent around this sort of 55 percent relative humidity range and it's noted that um, the largest temperature spread that we saw in, in outside and inside the keg and both inside and outside inside the house and in the garage was basically 0.6 which was a 0.01 percent difference but the humidity outside of the keg and inside of the keg was a, a whopping 24% difference. So even with relatively high levels of, of humidity didn't actually change the internal uh, humidity of the uh, powder inside the container. And here's a graph here showing you that data um, averaged across all timelines, across all different um, uh, sessions and the this line here or well, these two lines here they're hard to distinguish because they are so consistent so over the 17 and a half hour period um, this is the relative humidity inside the powder keg over 17 and a half hours both uh, inside the house and outside the house and it is extremely consistent it's almost impossible to discern the lines between the two they are basically the inside of the keg uh, maintained um, this level of humidity throughout all testing whether it was inside the house at 50 percent average or in the garage with about 70 percent average um, this was the humidity um, inside the garage just to show you we had an average about 70 percent humidity and it really persisted there was a slight drop here when my kids left the door <laughs> to the garage and the house open the humidity dropped a little bit because um, the drier air from inside the house came came into the garage and, and dropped it slightly. But then when I found the open door and closed it, it went back up to an average of about 70. Okay, so let's look at how this test may have impacted uh, actual shooting, actual performance of the powder. So um, the I went and shot 
um, five shot groups here to obtain velocity, velocity standard deviation and group size. And uh, what I ended up doing was using a, um, a lab radar to get the velocities and then I measured the groups center to center. So when the powder was inside the house um, across two five shot groups with the using the powder that was stored inside the house I had an average of 34 33 velocity 7.9 standard deviation average group size of 0.477 um, Powder stored in the garage when I shot that uh, the powder right after it was stored in the garage for the 17 um, and a half hours had an average of 34 28.5 velocity 12.9 standard deviation and a 0.454 group size so Kind of looking at that and going well did storing it in a you know highly humid environment um didn't seem to actually impact the humidity inside the keg but did it impact its performance out on the range and basically no the the averages for the velocity were about the same um, standard deviation was higher here but in my experience um, i shoot a lot of double digit standard deviations with uh, 6 ppc at 100 yards 200 yards and um, it, it doesn't really correlate whatsoever with group size or actual performance um, group size itself uh, was about the same once again um, slight edge to the powder stored in the garage even though it wasn't really exposed at all to any additional humidity i'd say these averages are about the same um, I did shoot some of these groups um, in some conditions, so the group sizes are a little bit larger than I normally get, but again, on average, about the same performance. Okay, so recently someone posted something on, um, um, on the web about, hey, should I leave my powder in the hopper in my electronic powder dispenser or will the humidity get to that and end up sort of changing my tune uh, definitely a valid question because those hoppers are not sealed as well in in a container like this obviously it's a very well sealed container it's made strictly out of hdpe which is meant to um, protect the internal you know whatever is inside the jug from humidity um, a uh, electronic powder dispenser is not designed that way. So that is a very good question. So I ended up uh, putting uh, powder in my electronic dispenser, dropped the Kestrel drop inside the dispenser, kept a Kestrel drop outside of the dispenser right next to the uh, electronic powder dispenser, and uh, basically measured the humidity inside of the um, hopper and outside of the hopper. What I found was actually that that hopper and that electronic powder dispenser did um, did prevent a, a high degree of humidity from coming in. There was an, there was seventy percent humidity in my garage at that time, um, and there was the the highest humidity rate rating inside the hopper was fifty nine percent. So it did go up from that sort of average of about fifty five percent to fifty nine percent. So there seemed to have been you know, a, a, a slight increase in the amount of humidity um, inside the hopper. So I decided, okay, that's interesting. Let's see if that that has any uh, implications on paper. So um, stored in the hopper, the humidity was 58.4% and stored in the keg, 55.6. Um, in the hopper, velocity was 34, 43 and a half. In the keg, 34, 46. Standard deviation was 7.4 for in the hopper, 8.7 for in the keg. Group size was 20.254 uh, when it was stored in the hopper and 0.2875 stored in the keg. So again, I'm not seeing anything in terms of the data that shows me that, oh wow, you know, keeping it in the hopper for, I think I kept it in there for 20 hours, um, affected the actual performance of the powder. All right, so what I thought was, okay, well, maybe the 70% humidity inside the house was not enough to penetrate the HDPE plastic. So I actually <laughs> took the jug and placed the drop inside of it and placed another drop outside of the jug and placed all of that outside of my house where 
we had a pretty humid uh, day that day. Um, and what you see here in this graph is this is the relative humidity outside of the powder keg. Um, the morning, and, and again, I did this for about 20 hours, um, kind of simulating almost like a, a match day. You know, you get there early in the morning, you leave your keg out, um, you, you shoot all throughout the day, and, you know, at the end of the day, you take your keg home. That could be a long day, you know, maybe, you know, 12, 16 hours. I ended up just leaving it outside for about 20 just to, you know, okay, maybe what if I spend the night at the range and I keep my keg out overnight kind of thing. Um, anyway. Um, the humidity started off kind of low, um, around 32%, but then it started increasing, and I think it started raining about here, and it went up to almost 80%, persisted that way for several hours, and then dropped and, and leveled off to just above 60%. And the blue line is the humidity as measured in the keg. Once again, it was roughly around 55%, a little bit higher to start, but then it kind of leveled out and it stayed, you know, 55 or just below. So uh, keeping the keg outside um, didn't seem to um, bring any humidity uh, to inside the keg.